Welcome back to another episode of Mac Break Studio. We're here in the beautiful, like rainy Pixelcore Studios. It's actually not raining in Pixelcore Studios. That would be bad. But um, we're here with Mark, and he's going to take us on a journey with rigging. He's going to rig yes. some rig some rigs. Rigs. Rig some widgets. Rig some widgets. widgets. Yes. yes. We're going to do it. So we did an under five, mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm I'm building on that. So I just want to show that. So mm -hmm. on our on the on our YouTube channel in our Motion Magic under five, we recently did something called creating transitions for movies. Very popular episode, by the way. So I wanted to follow up on it. So what we did there is uh, we used some free. Um, movies from Rampant Designs, where you can go to their site and sign up and you can get these free designs. And here's, I'll just show a preview, here's one of their movies. And the question was, well, how do I turn that cool little thing into a transition? And what I showed you in that was how to go into motion and create this, uh, which we then published to Final Cut and used a transition in Final Cut. So I'm not going to show you how to do this, but what I'm going to show you is like, well, that's great, but if you go back um, to the Finder here, we have many different types of these little paint on things that are these free movies from Rampant. Now you could create these in, in motion as well using the paint tool, uh, but I want to show you how to use it to do these. Maybe so, that's a future episode, how to, how to make those in motion. Yeah, how to make them <laughs> in motion. But let's use these. And instead of creating five, you know, there's these four ones that are called fast. I'm going to, instead of creating four separate transitions, I want to put them all in the same transition, and then you can choose which one you want to use when you apply in Final Cut. Right. So that's where the rigging comes in. Right. So all we're going to do is, you know, here we have motion. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this existing one and put it in its own group. So from the object menu, I'm going to choose group and I'll name that to uh, masks because there are the masks. And then right now the image mask that's applied to this transition, the source of it was that file, that rampant file. But now I'm going to use this group instead. I'm just going to drag it in the well. I didn't change anything. Um, now that I've done it, I need to turn on that file in there because the group itself is turned off. So nothing's changed. It's the same thing, but rather than using this particular movie as the source for creating the mask, I'm using the group that contains that movie. Right, and since there's only one movie in it, you're still getting the Still getting on. the same thing. Right. right, but what I'm going to do now is in the Finder, I'm going to select all the other ones, these other three, and I'm going to drag them into that same group. Nice. Okay. So now that they're all in there, I'll move my playhead to the middle, uh, and it's a big mess because they're all uh, turned on at this point, and they're all being used. But if I turn those all off, uh, we still have just this original one being used. So the question becomes, how can I you know, use each of these and choose which ones to use? It, the Final Cut Pro user being able to choose. The one exactly. Use. Looks like I'm missing one here. Oh, they didn't all go into the group. Sorry. When I drag, when you drag and drop, you really have to hit the right group. I didn't put it in the mask group. There we go. I just didn't put it in the right place. So all of these are in the mask group and only one's turned on. For instance, if I turn off that original one and say turn on this one instead and play, now that one's being used as creating the mask. Yep. Okay? So you can choose which, which one of these to turn on and which one to use. Now, when you're rigging, you can't use these checkboxes. So what I'm going to do is first... Uh, I'm going to turn them all on. So now we've got like a big mess in there because we're seeing all, all those movies play at once. So you can see that. Um, but now I'm going to turn their opacity off. So I'm going to shift click to select all of them. And then in the heads up display, I'm going to turn off the opacity or bring it all the way to zero. Okay. And this is just a tip that will make the rigging process easier to start with them all turned off. And now I want to create a rig. So from the object menu, I'm going to choose new rig. And a rig is just a container, and it's a container for these things called widgets, okay? Which, right. what the heck is a widget? Well, if you go to the inspector, widgets are sliders, sliders pop-ups, pop -ups, and checkboxes. Exactly. <laughs> They're just little controls. And in this case, we're going to use a pop-up. So I'll click on the pop-up one, and I'll rename it to a transition type, because we'll use this pop-up menu to choose which one of these guys we want to use. transition top. Oops. <laughs> type, thank you. There we go. Now, right now, we can see in the inspector... Here's our pop-up, and right now there are three different snapshots we can choose from. And we're going to want four, but right. we'll get to that in just a minute. First thing I want to do is I want to rig, this is where the verb rig comes in, I want to rig the opacity of each of these layers to that widget. And my, my first tip was to set them all to zero opacity to start with. My second tip is to start from the bottom up. And that's because they'll stack up correctly 
once we put them in the pop-up menu. Right. Okay. So with the bottom one selected, I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can add these um, to the rig. One is for opacity, I'm going to go to this pop-up, this little downward facing arrow and click on it. And then from there, I'm going to choose add to rig. I don't need a new rig. I already have a rig. So I'll go here and I have a rig called transition type. So I'm going to add it to that. Okay. So I'll select that. And we've now added that opacity parameter to that widget right. in the rig. So I'm going to go to the next one. And this time, just to show you there's options, instead of clicking on that downward facing arrow, I can control click right on the word opacity and choose add to rig, rig, add transition type. And then for this next one, you can even this right in the heads up display. So in the heads up display, I'll bring it over here to see a little bit more. I'll control click on the word opacity, add to rig, rig, add a transition type. And then for our last one, just to do something different, you can actually drag that word opacity right onto the rig itself to add it. Interesting. Which is another, so just, just another way to do it. Four different ways to do it. Four different ways wow. to, to rig. So if now we select that widget, we can see that we've rigged the opacity for each of those layers to it. And right now they're all turned off. Okay? So my first snapshot, my first state, each of these are states. I only want to see the top one. So all I need to do is drag that one up, okay? Now, if, if all of them had been set to 100% opacity, I have to drag three down instead of dragging one up. Got it. So that's why I set it up that way. Not a big deal here, but if you had 30, it's easier to drag one than 29. <laughs> so now that I've done that, I can see this one kind of wipes on. So I'm going to rename this one to, um, let's see, horizontal wipe. I'll just call it horizontal, yeah. okay? And then I'm going to go to the next one, snapshot two, and the all reset to zero, and I'm going to drag this one up. So, and this one goes to the center, so I'll rename this one center. And then go to the next one, snapshot three, and drag up the third one. And the stacking order of these exactly matches the stacking order in the layers list. Got That's it. why I work from the bottom up. And this one goes up and down, so I'll rename this one up and down. And now we're out of them. We need another one. So I'll click the plus button. And um, before I rename it, I'll just hit return for a minute and select it. And then for this last one, we want just this one on. And this is another one that goes sideways. It's kind of similar to the first one if we scrub through it. So I'll just call this one sideways. Okay, so now we have a pop-up menu that has each time we select a different state from it, only that layer turns on, you can see that one yeah. turned on in the layers yeah. list. Okay, so it's all set up. So now all I need to do is publish this. So I'll control click on the word transition type here and choose publish. Publishing is what makes that parameter available in Final Cut Pro 10. So now if I go to the project and go to project tab of project, we can see that is our published parameter. Yep. So this will show up in Final Cut. So what I'll do is I'm going to do a save as because I usually to save, but I'd save this outside of Final Cut, and I'll call this um, Paint On, and I'll create a new category, and I'll just call it um, MBS for MacBreak Studio, and click Publish. So now, when we go over to Final Cut, here I'm in Final Cut, and I'm in my tra Transitions browser, and there's our new category, MacBreak Studio, and there's our Paint On. So I'll throw it on here, and if we go up to the Inspector, there's our published. Our, our published parameter, our widget, basically, yeah. with our pop-up where we can choose whatever um, transition that we want. And then I'll just play across that. And if I don't like that, I can select it and select a different one, up and down, perhaps. I'll hit the forward slash key to play through that. So just an easy way to, instead of creating a bunch of separate <laughs> easy transitions. Is easy is a relative term. <laughs> <laughs> But I've, create, I've taken all of those and thrown them into a single transition and given you the option to choose which one you want instead of having a bunch of separate ones. So it just gives you a, it's a way of compacting things. Brings up a question for me. Yes. Because you're publishing this and, and it's going to publish this to the motion uh, templates folder. It's going to make, you know, uh, you know, some sort of a you know, motion uh, transition file, but then all of the media, all that rampant media, yes. that's 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 stored in a, it's stored there as well. Yes, it's stored so, there as well. So if you wanted to move this to the computer, you're actually moving those four rampant, yes. you got to move those four rampant movies yes. with it, correct? Yes, but what I would do in Final Cut is uh, choose to store these in a library. 
Right. Right. Because you can now store your motion templates in the right. in, in a library. But my point is, is that people need to understand that those 4K transition files need to go with. Yes. Yes. So it can it become it can become large if you've got a right. lot of those. I only did four there. And the other the other caveat is you want to use files of the same duration. So yes. you notice in the Finder there were ones called fast and ones called slow, and I only did the fast ones. They happen to have the same duration. Right. It's a little more complicated, but they have different lengths because you right. want want them to match. Um, but I wanted to introduce the rigging concept uh, in the context of uh, something we've done before and taking it a step further. Right. Sounds like it's time to make a new rigging tutorial. <laughs> could be. Yeah. Could be. All right. Yes. Awesome. So, really great tip, uh, spurred on by a lot of your questions from the first thing he showed and how to rig that single one. Now you know to take it to the next level and make a single transition that has multiple selection transition selection types. Really great. Check us out at rippletraining.com, the usual social media places. Thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you next week.